welcome to Avant Life Church. It is our second birthday weekend. So we're going to stand. We're going to give God glory for all that He has done. Why don't you lift up your voices as we celebrate? look good. How you doing Saturday night? How you doing? Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. If you're joining us online, happy birthday to you too. You look great. Why don't you just turn to somebody and say, hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh man, we are so excited to celebrate this weekend. Um, just a reminder, you're all doing great. You've all nailed it. Every service at Avant Life will now be mask mandatory. All good? Good job. They look good, you look good. I can feel the smiles still. Even at home, you gotta wear your masks. It's just the way it is. 
Um, hey, we have an incredible Kids Life program here at Avon Life Church. That is only, though, on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. And that is, it used to be actually ages between um, 4 and 12, but now 1 and 12. It's just the one-year-old has to be able to walk, like, pretty well. Like, if they fall, we'll catch them, but we just don't want to be, like, cuddling them the whole time, just given the COVID restrictions. Sound good? That is for you to know because you're going to have people you meet, friends you meet, that have kids. And hey, our church, we want to steward every single generation because our God's a generational God, and that's what he calls us to do. And we have an incredible Kids Life program. So, next, it's right here. I had a 50-50 chance to pull out the right card, and I did. Connect and engage card. If you haven't filled this out, this is so you can call Avant Life your spiritual home. You belong here. You belong to be uh, planted. You're called to be planted with deep roots. And we just want to know who you are. So fill this out. If you don't have one and you haven't done it, just come find me or one of our hosts. We will get you one. We have launched Avant Life Youth called... Woo! Boom. I am one of the pastors of uh, youth, Pastor Matt, along with my wife, Pastor Amanda, and the incredible team. It has been amazing. We've done two weeks now. We're going on three, and the students are hungry for God. We're having a great time, but we're having an even better time leaning into God's presence, learning how to pray, learning how to worship, and just be there, because God's call on this generation is undeniable. Oh, and, and we're going to discover it because um, they're hungry for God and they're in love with Him. So, grade 7 to 12, that's for you. Remember that for your friends. Cool, cool? Hey, if you want to give to Avon Life Church, that doesn't happen in here, but it's in the cafe. And that's uh, between you and God. It's, it's, that, um, it's an act of obedience between you and God, if you call this home. That's in the cafe. And um, on your table, we have our praise and prayer cards. 50-50 chance. I nailed it. I can feel it. I pray. <laughs> it's on there for you. You got a prayer on your heart or in your mind, get it on that paper because we also partner with that as a team and we pray over them throughout the week. And there's so much power when we pray together. Not because of who we are, but because of who we pray to. And that's our King, Jesus. That's where our authority is. We're a church that prays. We're passionate about prayer. And whatever it is, it's worth being on the card. So it's either for you, for a friend, for this world, for the church. Sound good? All right. God, we're just so thankful for what you've done this past two years. How incredible are you, Lord? God, continue to allow us to step in these miracles through our acts of obedience and our faith in you, God. We just, we can put our trust in you and not be put to shame in everything. You're so good. Meet with us right now, God. We just want to draw near to you, and we know that your word promises that you draw near to us. What a gift that right now in 2020, we can lead in to the King of Kings. We praise you, and we worship you right now as a church at home and right here together in spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray where we hear praise as he hears faith. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear worship, he hears faith. Can you hear the sounds? Oh. Let's sing this out. Awake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud. 
sing his praise aloud. Oh, wake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud, sing his praise aloud. you've done before in greater measure you will do again Let's sing this out cause there's no prison wall you can't break through no mountain you can't move all things are possible there's no broken body you can't raise no all that you can save all things are possible the darkest night you can light it up you can light it up oh god of revival let hope arise death is overcome Yeah. 
I love that song. I think there's no better time than the day that we celebrate and cast our eyes on two years of what God has been doing in and through us as a church collectively here on the North Shore. That 
where, where we've arrived today is not the finality, it's not the end, it's not like we've, uh, we've arrived at this full completion, there is more to come. And I remember when we first started to talk that God had called us to come plant a church on the North Shore of Vancouver. You know, people who I know had our best interest in mind and this is not an issue with them, but it is a focus on the logistics. They were like, well, you, you know, even if you do come, it's gonna be really difficult. The North Shore is a really hard place to plant a church, especially a spirit-filled church. You're never gonna own a building or land because it's too expensive. And even if, you manage to get a school that lets you come in and use it, it's going to be expensive or it's going to be lots of restrictions. And I look at this and I go, you know what, it's so important two years on, three years on to be reminded what you fix your eyes upon determines how you enter a season. And we're going to sing this again as a church because we don't fix our eyes on the miracles that God has already given us. Those miracles tell us He can do it but we're not to remain in the miracle. We've got to believe for more. We've got to hope for more. There's greater things to come. I've come here to Canada, to the North Shore, to see people's lives changed. I've seen those people that once didn't have hope receive hope in Jesus. That's why we exist as Christians, to see the lost found, the blind see sight again. We've come to make a difference, to see revival. As we enter the season of our third year, as we celebrate what God has done, Let's sing this, let's fix our eyes. You know what? Doesn't matter. Yep, the North Shore, hardest place, darkest place. But our God is the God that can light anything up. He's the God that can slay any giant, who can tumble any wall, who can lift any mountain and cast it into any ocean He wants because He's the God of revival. Are you guys ready to believe that and sing that over our season to come? The year three for us is the best year as a church. It's the best year for you. And let's believe for revival now. Let's awaken ourselves. Come awaken your people. Come awaken the city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold crumble. I hear the change. Come on, let's sing it, let's believe it. Oh God of revival. Spirit, we've come to encounter you right now. 
We've created this space in our hearts and minds and we have a spirit of expectation that we've seen you in our life before and we want to see you in greater measure. We're desperate for more. Lord, as we take time this evening to reflect on your goodness, your faithfulness, the power of your call on each and every one of our lives, Would you fill this space? Would you minister to us? Would you encourage, embolden us, Lord God? Father, I pray for those people that are here right now and those that are listening from home online. Lord God, that you would instill in them greater levels of faith. Lord, that they have a purpose. Lord, that they're called a disciple of Christ first and everything that they do in your name, Lord God, has eternal value. Lord, we give you all the glory on our second anniversary as a church our happy birthday we say thank you for all that you've done all that you're doing and all that you're going to do in and through us in Jesus name Amen Amen. Thank you worship team Church you may take your seats if you're at home you may start to snack on your food privileges of being at home right Hey we've got a great part of the service coming up right now. You know, in all this craziness of 2020, we thought it'd be a really awesome idea to take the time and properly document, and we documented it, but put the documentation together and show you the story from the exact moment God began to speak to Pastor Emma and I and how it's journeyed over the last three and a half years. I know as a church, we are celebrating our two-year birthday, but As a call from God, this has been a journey from for Pastor Emma and I since 2015 October, so almost five years now, that we've been on this march to see God's goodness, God's faithfulness resonate here on this part of the world. And so we've got a video documentary, which I do believe is going to bless you. And I want to I want to remind you that. The whole heart behind this, why I think it's important that we look at what God has done is that there is a biblical standard to find our boast in the Lord. And what I love about as Christians and as believers here right now, we get to boast in the work that God has done in and through us. He says, I will shame the strong through the power that I give to the weak. How powerful is that? that the wise would, make, would be made to look foolish in the goodness and the redemption and the almighty power and the authority he has in the narratives of our lives. We are a tapestry of God's goodness and favour, each and every one of us, our story. Before I show the video, and I know it's going to bless you, the team's done a wonderful job, I want to I wanna top and tail this boast in the Lord with the the scriptural mandate that we have to remember. We see in the book of Joshua, chapter 3, the Israelites are now in the season of leaving the wandering period, the wilderness period, and they're heading into the promised land after 40 years on the walk. Who here likes walking? Who here likes walking for 40 years? Ain't nobody got time for that, right? And I love what it says here is that God, and I'm going to paraphrase it for you, but God speaks to Joshua, who's now leading the people of Israel. And he tells them it's time for the people to break camp. It's time to leave what was. It's time to leave the wilderness. It's time to march onto the promise. And he tells them, hey, you need to cross the River Jordan. And I love it because When we get to chapter 4, the Bible tells us that it is the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant that enter the water first. And it's the time of year that the Jordan River is overflowing. Isn't it just like our God to make a point even bigger? He didn't wait for the dry period. He went for the wet period. He went for the monsoon season. He went for the hardest option, the most impossible option. And he sends... The priests and the Ark of the Covenant in first. And the Bible tells us as they begin to enter the water, that up at the the town of Adam, the water is held back. The power of God falls as His presence enters the moment. And And the river dries up and it becomes a highway from what was the wilderness, what was death, 
into what is the promise and what is life. And we see this story unfold as the Israelites move from, the, from death into life, from the wilderness into the promise. God speaks to Joshua and he says, hey, I want you to pick 12 men, one from each tribe. And they're to go and pick up a stone from the river and they're to place it where I tell you to place it as a memorial. And so Joshua picks these 12 men and they go do what he instructed them to do according to the word of God. And they they bring these stones back. And the Bible tells us that he wants them, the Israelites, to do this so that their children, that the generations to come will look back and go, what was done in the midst of these stones? What do these stones signify? What are they the memorial of? And for the Israelites, it was the inheritance of a promise, one that took hundreds of years to inherit. It could have taken 40 years quicker if it wasn't for doubt. And so when we look at this right now, as we watch this video, one, it is to honour those people that have done incredible acts of obedience But two, it's to inspire you with every new season, there is new people. With every new move of God, there's an increase in capacity. Threads are added to the tapestry of Avant Life. We're in the third year now, heading into our third year as a church here on the North Shore. And what I love is that we're a church that does have a building. We have two But we didn't do anything for it. I got to be careful when I talk with people like other pastors. How you doing, Pastor Man? Good. What's God doing in your life? Stuff. (laughs) I haven't manufactured something here. You haven't manufactured. All we've done is partnered in obedience what God was already doing. We are the inheritors of decades of people's faith and hard work. Now we're the stewards of it. And soon what will take place is people will look at our lives and they'll either go, that is a memorial stone that speaks and testifies of the impossible God and the nature that we serve, or they're going to see what went wrong there. How did that go astray? So let's watch this video. And my hope is no matter where you join the journey of Avant Life, maybe you were there Well, you weren't there. Maybe you were there at the start. Or maybe you were part of seconds. Doesn't matter when you join the journey. Maybe you're here watching for the first time. And you're like, where is, what am I doing? Where am I? Can I encourage you that God is not just doing this in my life. He's not just doing it in the people that already call Avant Life Church home. He is stirring people those who already have a faith and maybe they're being reawakened, to those who are searching, they're seeking, and he's beginning to show more than ever that he is using us to bring people back into a relationship with God. Wherever you stand on the journey, wherever your foot may be placed tonight, I pray that your heart is open and your your mind is attentive to the Holy Spirit because this story I know is divine. I know it has been decades in the making and I know each and every one of you are here for a reason. So as we turn our attention to the screens and as we watch this, would you be blessed? Two years, Avant Life Church, we are celebrating today our anniversary. It's been like an awesome two years, but it's not just been limited to two years. No Avant Life story has been stories over the decades of people's faithfulness. We're going to talk a little bit about that today, and we're going to celebrate the many stories that keep being added to those stories. Absolutely. And it's going to be a lot of fun, and it should stir our faith for so much more. No matter where you have joined the journey, maybe you are here from the start, or maybe today is your first day, let this inspire you. Come oh on. All right, so get this, we're at this conference. Yeah. I am bored out of my brains in this session. I wanted to leave, I mentally checked out, but all of a sudden, Emma stands up and Emma leaves. I'm left sitting there by myself thinking, how is it the person that wants to be here is gone, but the person who doesn't want to be here is stuck. And in that moment of being distracted, being bored, 
I honestly feel the Holy Spirit just drop this into my heart, a simple thought, Ben, your current season is about to change forever. Now at that time, we were youth, young adult, worship, creative pastors, we were the project managers, the event managers, and all of a sudden God's saying that's gonna change or something's gonna change. And it's interesting because we were like we were loving our season of life. Oh it was absolutely fun. Oh. <laughs> Everything seemed so well and ordered and lovely mm -hmm. and yeah there was a real peace there but then And then I get a text from Emma. I just remember it comes in, I look at my phone and you're like, we're pregnant. Yeah. I assumed, and I think it's a safe assumption, yeah. that God was saying our season's gonna change, going from two to three kids. Yeah, of course the season's gonna look different, but mm -hmm. both you and I understood that, hey, maybe, maybe it's not just the pregnancy that yeah. God was speaking to, yeah. because there was a, a undescribed or indescribable excitement about an unknown destination, and we didn't know what it was at the time, but we knew enough to pursue it. Hi, church. You may be wondering where I am. I'm standing on the North Shore of Vancouver, the great city of Vancouver, Canada. You might be asking, what are you doing there apart from having a good time? We've actually been exploring the possibility of planting a church in Vancouver. 2016, three months later, I can't even remember how it came up, but at that point, we sort of knew God was calling us to Canada. We're very happy to announce, very excited to announce that we will be, uh, along with our family, our kids, hopefully, if they behave themselves, will be coming with us to plant a new church in North Vancouver, Canada. Pastor Ben came up to me and tapped me on the shoulder and was like, uh, Dan, I've got a little project for you. And I was like, lovely, something to sink my teeth into. I had to put this project together, this video, but little did I know that this would be one of the biggest projects of a lifetime. It turns out that this simple video wasn't just gonna be something that got played on a Sunday and everything, everyone was gonna clap about. It was gonna transform the trajectory of my life, um, my family's life, and a bunch of other Australians who, I guess we didn't fully understand what we were getting into, but now looking back, it's quite hilarious. If you said to me, Ben, you're gonna plant a church in Sydney, I probably wouldn't have got excited. But you take the church planning and you partner with Canada, now, I was really awakened by that. You were a church planning kid, you were a missionary kid. I moved to Canberra in Australia when I was two years old and I didn't live anywhere else. It's true. You were like, yeah, let's do it, right, it's gonna be awesome. And I'm like, hold up a second. Emma, are you unhappy today? <laughs> Don't you guys have work to do? I'm are you a bit unhappy? What are you doing today? And I'm here in my little, like nervous state going, I haven't heard God in this yet. I was like, God, give me three signs. I need three clear signs, otherwise I'm not doing it kind of thing yeah. in this stubborn kicking my heels in type of like way. Like a Gideon way. I was exactly Gideon. Like I remember because we were in our friend's car, we were borrowing their car and it was on like a radio station just from that yeah, local like area. 106.5 CFM. Yeah, so this radio station was on and this is within the hour of that prayer. Mm. In that moment, the guy comes on, oh, we're gonna talk about the next thing at the Gold Coast in Australia and that's gonna be cost of living here in the mm. Gold Coast. And so the first caller, do you remember? Mm. Where was he from? He's, he was from North Vancouver. He was from North Vancouver in Canada. Like, mm. and I just remember listening and, and it was like God was saying, hey. And I'm like, oh, here we go. But then we got to the restaurant. And like most like hospitality places on the Gold Coast, people have accents because they're doing their work and holiday visa. They're getting it done. The guy's got an accent and I said, oh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Canada, are you there, bud? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How about that? I'm from Canada. Sorry about that, yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, no way, of course. Where yeah, you about? treated him pretty rough, eh? Hey? You no, were like distant, you were sort of like, nice. hey, look, God's using you, but I'm not pumped about this. Anyways, and he said, I'm from Vancouver. And so it was like, God was being like, check. And I was like, here we go. Yeah, he actually said he was from North Vancouver. And so I was like, yeah, this is all very well and good. I can see that God, you do miracles and you answer things, but like my spirit's not settled. And it wasn't until we were driving home after dinner, we got lost. I just thought I could find, I, I thought I knew the way home without using the phone. Yeah, and so pulls over 
and he's like, oh, where are we? Like, look at the street <laughs> sign. And if you like Google Maps this, Vancouver Drive in Robina, in Queensland, in Australia, is exactly where we were. And as soon as I saw that street sign, I received that peace that was beyond any understanding. Boom. In your life, in 100%. your heart, over your mind. It was literally. Spirit awakened. Isn't God, God is funny. funny. He's a funny God. He's, He's so cheeky funny. like that. He's a bit creepy. Anyway, I flew out with my lead pastor and another elder of the church. We checked out North Vancouver, listened for the call of God. I was like, man, it's so beautiful, but you could just feel like it was like oppressive at the same time. I went down to a church in Surrey. You know, people prayed over us. We were still trying to figure out if it's a yes. Like, are we going to commit this? There's no turning back after this point. An old couple came up to me and they said, hey, God wants you to know that if you are faithful, and obedient, he's going to allow you to inherit the faithfulness of those who have worked for decades before you. We're so excited God is giving the best years of your life to me. And I remember just sort of like, whoa, that's a lot of information stressed out. But at the same time, that just resonated at me that God is not finished yet. And he said, but I'm not finished yet. And if you and Emma, if you would pursue this, you would see miracle after miracle, but you got to say it, you got to tell people, you got to claim it, and you've got to begin to put a, a, a faith statement in the ground and say, you know what, we're not going back. Yeah. We're done, we're cooked. And then we put it out there, we said, hey, if you want to join us, pray about it, and if that's you, let us know, and let's begin the journey. And yeah. so our game plan was this, myself, Joel, and Dan, would fly out to Vancouver and for the first two weeks we would prepare the way. Were they like good travel buddies? Like they flew all right on the airplane and stuff? Dan was amazing, but believe it or not, Joel is terrified of flying. Joel Thurkett. I hate flying. I hate flying. Petrified. Uh, all right, the plane trip. Uh, this has gone down in avant life folklore. We are flying from New Zealand to Canada and all of a sudden the plane starts shaking. And I mean really bad turbulence. At one point the plane felt like the whole thing dropped and there were like the overhead lockers that just opened. There was a piece of luggage that fell on someone. It was really quite scary. And so I just like curled up in the seat with the mask on and just tried to drown out everything that was happening. And then all of a sudden I get a tap on my shoulder and I'm like, Joel, Let's look out the window together. He's like, no, Dan, no, don't look out the window. I'm like, yes, Joel, we're gonna look out the window. We open the window and to, to justify his fear, there is so much lightning and there's a storm and it is like fireworks outside. There is lightning flashes everywhere. And I'm petrified at this stage, shaking. I'm like, I don't wanna see any of this at all. And then we just hear like the pilot just put the burners on and we're like, obviously we're going around it or we're flying over it, whatever. And then we looked at the map and he's just turning to avoid this storm. And Joel is like, it, the whole plane's rattling. We're so afraid, but it's so funny because it's not us that's the most afraid person on the plane. Joel was fun to travel with. We landed, we had interesting conversations, but by about day three, we realized because of how our visas work, the issues around our visas, the fact that your and my visa didn't come through. We landed on a whole, uh, tourist visa, which meant we couldn't get a social insurance number. We couldn't get a house because people need a social insurance number. We couldn't get all this stuff that you yeah. logistically needed. And, you know, I remember by like day three or four, we'd realized that this whole idea that we would come and we would make a way, not God has come and God has made a way, was a stupid idea. And so we just, had to, we began to pray and fast and wait for you guys to arrive two weeks later. In that moment, I just remember thinking, we don't have any idea what our enemy looks like just yet. We don't fully comprehend what God is gonna get up to, what he's gonna be doing, but the family, the, the, the first few 15 that had just landed in Vancouver, all that mattered was that our hearts, that, that what we were doing, that this enthusiasm and, and faith was now all together, that it was this bigger organism than just the three of us sitting in a basement suite beside ourselves, not knowing what to do. There's gonna be logistical trials all the time, but it's not a logistical battle. This is a spiritual battle. Yeah. And we had to take that approach, so even true. in our chaotic landing, that God wasn't asking us to fight for logistics. He was asking us to fight
growing spiritually. Yeah. It's so true. I remember you landed, the kids were so excited, the airport moment was so beautiful. Uh, I felt like I hadn't seen you for like a huge amount of time, it had only been two weeks, but a bit clingy like that. But I look at that moment and it's just this vivid memory of now it, we were all together mm. and we were all beginning this mission and Everything we thought would be easy was difficult, yeah. and everything we thought was difficult, God made easy. And I love how He shifted our perspective on that um, to the point that we, you know, we got the cars given to us. We had unbelievable favor yeah. with accommodation. We we ended up having two large group homes that yeah. we got we got to rent. Yeah. And um, that first, you know, ten months in that group home in West Vancouver, that was different. It was from what we were used to. And it was like God was saying, you can't rely on this because I need to take you into a new season of understanding me. Yeah. And it was in that humbling experience of actually none of our abilities are making a way here. <laughs> like, like, our you, visa hadn't come no, through, it nothing. was chaos. It's like, and if we put our resume out there and we listed all of the things that mm. we were capable of, like, it's like, yeah, church planning should be great for these guys. Like, <laughs> of course, this is fine. And none of it mattered. Like, we slept in a single room for six weeks with you, me, and the kids on blow-up mattresses. And it was tough, it was hard, our backs were cooked. But God was phenomenal in those moments. Yeah. The group house was difficult, but it was rewarding. Christmas there was amazing. Our it first Christmas, a white yeah. Christmas. Like, we had all this hardship, but at the same time, we had these memories that are gonna be with us forever. And I look at like, like people right now listening to this, your hardship is God's, it's his, his drawing board of just beautiful miracles yeah. and beautiful memories. And that's what that house was. And I remember Alicia arrives. Her arrival was the beginning of something new. I'm having a random conversation with a friend who had been in Vancouver for a little while. And I just joked around saying that, oh, I should go to Vancouver too. And it was literally a joke. Um, sometimes God uses that. And um, so the next day my dad called me and we were just talking about random stuff about life. And my dad out of the blue said, hey, you should go traveling again. You should go to Canada. And I was like, well, okay, you've got my attention, God. And I was like, I need a church to get plugged into. I need a church. That is what I need to do something this big because church is my family. So that night I, I sat down and looked for a church in Vancouver. Couldn't find anything that really sat well with me. And I was like, I give up. God, if you really want me to do this, you need to make it really obvious. And so I went to bed and the next morning I woke up I opened up Instagram and the first thing that popped up was Avant Life Church. I had met them a couple of years ago at uh, one of the leaders retreats in Australia. Never talked to them since. I just followed a bunch of them on Instagram. And it just popped up and said Avant Life Church. I was like, what is this? What is this church? Opened up the, um, like the caption and it said, this weekend we're praying for and raising money for the team that are going to plan a church in Vancouver, Canada. And I was like, okay so I remember landing here not knowing any of them and immediately I felt like this sense of like this this is where I'm meant to be which um, you know if you know Aussies um, you know they're really really lovely to start with but then the banter comes straight away the banter comes and I knew that this was my new family I remember that pivotal moment where God said you know what I want you to wait. I don't want you to launch uh, January 2018. I want you to wait till September 2018, which is funny because, you know, that's exactly where our funding would run out. And, and, and we don't know then after that point, would we have money to survive? Would we be able to put the kids through school for the year? And we were like, okay, let's make this statement. We were just going through the motions. When we listened to really what God said, he was yeah. saying, hey, let me do the work. I'm not finished yet. I'm, I'm working the miracle. Yeah. In this waiting period, mm -hmm. God started opening up door after door. I, I still remember in January, we, we found out we were pregnant. Yep. And that was like, Huge for us. And, and baby's due date was like... Launch date. Launch date. Like uh, we were, I was like, how is this going to happen? And, but we trusted that God would be, would be in it. And yeah. it was in this period of time, in that delay, 
that um, at 20 weeks pregnant, we lost our son. Mm. And if we had not been obedient to God's voice to delay, we would have launched a church and gone through the trauma of losing mm. him in the very early days. And God yeah. knew that. He knew that, like... He's such a faithful He God. is. And he knew that we needed that time for healing mm. and restoration and, and just to find comfort in him and to know how to lead ourselves through trauma. Because the reality is we've encountered people that have had these traumatic moments in their life and they've needed someone who's ex like has an understanding mm. of that to help walk yeah. them through. And so God knew exactly what was needed for us during that time. And we just had to trust him in that moment. Soon after the delay, Henry arrived. Yes. Aiden, arrived, Aiden arrived. And there was a, like, there was a new wave of momentum yeah. with those guys. Yeah. Aiden and Henry, when they turned up, brought so much youthfulness to the group. <laughs> Lots of antics. Oh, actually, one of the most hilarious things that happened was when they turned up, all the guys pranked them. I had Dan and uh, Ben come pick me up from the airport. Ben's given me, you know, this, this spiel on um, Vancouver. It's super expensive. Living is super hard. You know, you're lucky to have a house that you can stay at and um, you should be grateful with what you have. And so I arrived at the East Van house in my mind, um, going, whatever is thrown at me, I've just got to be grateful. I was led upstairs to the um, top floor of our house and um, I was shown this closet and it was probably about three or four feet high. And um, Dan's opened the sliding doors of this, this cupboard and before me was this mattress, you know, this little light and a little Reese's chocolate on the pillow, sort of like a hotel sort of vibe thing. And um, he tells me that this is my room. What the heck, this can't be it. Like I didn't fly all this way to live for the next two years in this little room. And so I'm lying in this cupboard. I've closed the doors, I kid you not, like I cried myself to sleep and I was woken up early by Dan, who was obviously going to work the next day or whatever it was, and so I didn't get a sleep in, and um, he opens the, the, the cupboard, and he's got his phone out, <laughs> and um, he, I just remember like turning over looking at him, and he's just like, Henry, what are you doing? And like, you know, my eyes are half open, I gave him a horrible response, but I was like, you know, what do you mean, what am I doing? He's like, this isn't your room. Your room is down the hall. And I'm like, no, it's not. This is my room. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I shut the cupboard on him and try to get some sleep. And, um, you know, I just heard him laughing as he, you know, walked away. And, um, yeah, that was my first night in Vancouver. But they had set a room aside for me. Yeah, they're mean people. <laughs> In January, we connected with a pastor here on the North Shore, Pastor Steve. Mm. And this conversation began of when God called us, what he said to us, and over the coming months, we quickly realized there was an alignment there. It was 2006, and we weren't seeing the growth in the church. And um, basically, there was my young family, you know, my sons, and older people. <laughs> It was like we were just desperate. I was reading my Bible and I read in 2 Kings uh, chapter 7, the story of Elisha. There was a siege on um, the city and he was saying, you know, God, God's showing me all these things and um, even though everything was so bad in the city, like it was like, think bad. It was very, very bad. And the king obviously was very frustrated. He wasn't a God follower and he wanted to behead Elisha. So he came down to Elisha's house and he said, you know, why should I, why should I listen to God anymore? Um, Elisha said, you know, this time tomorrow, everything will be different. Um, you know, you'll get lots of food for very cheap and basically my paraphrase. But I just felt in my spirit, God was saying, yeah, there's a change coming to Canyon Heights. That's what we were called. And, but it'll be, it'll be quick and basically a flip. So be ready. Swing forward to 2018 
And God used the coffee shop to bring Emma and Ben into um, our sphere. And they met our replant pastor, Steve Moore, and just you know started chit-chatting, getting to know one another. And one thing led to another, and we had the space, we had the resources, uh, they had the vision, and you know a few uh, at that point, only a few workers, but you know more than we had. So it was a very positive thing. I remember Pastor Steve being convinced that God was saying, "Hey, I need to hand over the building and the asset that God had given us." And he's talking about his church, and it was in decline; it was struggling. That. We were what God was going to use to revitalize the asset and see hundreds of new Christians come to faith and young people find a place to journey in their faith. You know, this building is a miracle. And, and I just remember just when they handed the keys over and we just began, the team just began. We had to renovate this place. We had to raise funds for this place. Um, but it did justify that God had told us to wait that he had something for us yeah. that he's not finished yet, and he and he was doing that right now. Um, and some of our fondest memories were sleepless nights renovating in belief that God was doing something, <laughs> he'd given us something, that we were in the next season of this. Um, and the team just did a phenomenal job. And what I think is interesting is that he brought the right people yeah. for the right time, because it's in this season that Matt and Amanda turned up. Yeah. Okay, so picture this. Uh, we're a bunch of Australians and uh, we need coffee. And we do a quick Google search, find that there's a cafe called Crema, literally a couple of hundred meters away, and we make our way into the cafe. This dude comes in and he looks like a Ken doll. Lo and behold, this is Joel Thurkettle. He comes up and says, hey dude, how you going? I was like, oh, good, cool. And we made conversation, he was very friendly. Because I didn't recognize him, I asked him, uh, so like, where are you from? Like, clearly you're from Australia. And he said, yeah, no, nah, we're here to plant a church. And it was at that moment that I wanted nothing to do with him. Which is harsh, but I knew exactly what this guy was here for. I could tell this dude was on fire for God. He was a church planner. You know, it was just one of those, those moments where I was convicted in my own walk with God because I grew up Christian, yet in this encounter with him, um, I was faced with the reality that I was not close with God anymore. We basically went from Dan and Joel coming to the cafe, me ignoring them and not wanting anything to do with the invitation and the, the what they were doing, to avoiding them for about eight months to a year, having the most ridiculous roller coaster battle in between those months, while being supported by mom and dad and prayer and advice along the way, to meeting pastors Ben and Emma, getting prayed over, uh, and being asked to join the church. I get saved and then really soon after we went to a leadership conference um, with Ben and Emma and Joel. Um, we really felt like there was a call of ministry that was on our lives that we responded to and we got prayed over for that, which was incredible. And I think we didn't realize what was being sewed in at that time, but now we're seeing exactly yeah. what that is. We came home, we got baptized together, you know, we got married um, and now we're leading a youth ministry together um, and really seeing just that response to that that call of ministry mm. start to take concrete shape and it's just the most exciting thing. Yep. And you're looking at all these journeys, all these stories are beginning to intersect. Yeah. And it's becoming the bedrock DNA of what Avant Life Church is. We are hundreds of stories growing to thousands of stories that God is intricately weaving together in this beautiful tapestry of creativity, of godly success and belief and influence. Come on. And it all begins with right people, right time. You're not thinking about North Vancouver, There's <laughs> the 4840 asset on Catalana yeah. Road, but God's going, hey, like there's something bigger than just this moment that I'm working. And so often in our lives, we look at just this moment and, and what I'm doing right now. And, and if we let those frustrations of the things that aren't working um, in those moments take over, we lose sight of yeah. the fact that God's actually building something far bigger than one moment. As we march towards launch, it became evident and it's something that we took into launch, post-launch, but this is it. Avant Life Church, everyone that's calling Avant Life Church, but from the moment it began in 2015, every person was hand-selected as like a hit squad, like God was perfectly designing 
these people to play this this specific role that would unlock one thing after the yeah. other and what would have taken decades God did and unraveled in, in two years. God was going to use Avant Life and he was going to he was going to flood this nation from the mountain that we sit on as a church. He was going to rush down and use each and every one of us and once again new season new people. And I remember connecting for, with dinner with Gordon and Julie and it was just it was one of those moments in time where you're like wow after all that we've experienced in the last two years, yet here is another moment that yeah. you just know is God ordained, that he was bringing right people, new season, right time. We had been going to another church uh, in Vancouver, and I'd heard about this church, um, that there was some new life coming in here, and uh, thought I'd check it out, being in the community. And uh, so I came one Sunday morning, and walking through the doors, just about tripped on the carpet, or some cables or something that was here because you can't see anything in here, it's so dark. <laughs> and um, had a great experience, a uh, little bit out of my comfort zone, actually completely out of my comfort zone. Uh, was not used to uh, the format of this church. Came home and reported back saying, uh, I don't think we're going back there, this is crazy. <laughs> then our youngest daughter, Anna, said, well, you gotta give it a chance, you can't be so judgmental. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a couple weeks later, um, I came with Anna, <clears throat> and uh, same thing, dark, loud, uh, out of my comfort zone. That's when I really started feeling the Holy Spirit, sort of, there was something happening here. Holy Spirit is definitely alive and well, and uh, doing a work here. And then they brought me. Right. <laughs> and I remember um, coming in, the same thing, like, ooh, because you had already prepped me about the, <laughs> the lighting and everything else. But we sat near the back and just trying to get kind of comfortable and I immediately felt the presence of the Holy Spirit here and we had actually brought my mom who was 86 and she looked at me and she goes the Holy Spirit is here so that was an amazing uh, confirmation at that moment and um, I look over at Gordon and the tears are coming down the tears are coming down with me I'm feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit and he was like speaking words of life into my life and that happened like the first time I came here. We stayed a little longer each time, talked to a few more people. It was just a really, really great start of an amazing experience here at Avant Life Church. And we're just so happy and we started volunteering on teams. And when you see the, the miracle really of the way this building came to be for Avant Life North Vancouver and then also the building, how that came to be in Squamish. Uh, those things don't just happen every day. And we're longtime church attenders. We've mm -hmm. been raised in the church. We were both from Christian families. And I think coming here now, it's um, taken us actually to a new new place in our walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it's challenging us to be going beyond where we were happy being for the many years. Mm -hmm. And we're really excited about seeing what God is going to be doing yeah. um, in our lives, in the lives of the people that come here and uh, the expansion of his kingdom. We see all this happening and we hear God saying, hey, there's another step of growth. We've got to pioneer again. Mm -hmm. It's like God allowed mm -hmm. this small fringe city of Squamish to begin to invade our thoughts. And the way he did that was, I've asked you as a church to go where others won't go. Yeah. And maybe others won't find exciting. And I want you to bring that creativity, that excitement, that momentum in faith to those, you know, regional towns, those, those, those forgotten places. And we began to pray about that. And you could, you could feel the stir. Something really like spoke to me about the ones that people don't think about. Yeah. You know, the ones on the fringes. God wants to collect those lost sheep. He mm. wants to pay attention to the one that yeah, so others don't. And I think in that, like, you bring this, this miraculous move of God and this greater sense of the body of Christ operating in yep. the way that it should be. We're so confident because we've now been through this journey of what that sounds like, of sending us to Squamish and the church again erupting and it's excited and it's almost reliving that faith-filled jubilation yeah. of God is on the move again yeah. and and then waiting what that looks like. And it's God saying, own the city and I'll provide a way. Yeah. And as the world was shutting down, God was opening up Squamish to us. Yeah. 
and he'd spoken once again to a church that was in decline, but God's saying, I'm not finished with you yet. I'm gonna build new walls on old foundations. And, and then we got given through just a beautiful uh, moment, people desperate to be a part of a family that is alive. Going, you know what, what God has given to us, we freely give to your stewardship. Let's see what God does in this. Yeah. And we got given another building. I know. Each and every one of us that call Avant Life yeah. home, God has commissioned you and positioned you for such a time as this. You're not a seat warmer. You've got a, you've got a role to play. You've got a responsibility to walk out God's calling on your life. And it's when we as a family come together in faith and we begin to believe in the impossible, that the impossible not only takes place for us as a church, but it begins to unlock the impossibilities in your own life. It's this constant expectation that God can do more. Absolutely. The story is real. This is happening. It's continuing to happen. So each and every one of you that you're like, you know what, God has placed me in Avant Life Church. You need to have a moment where you go, all right, what is my role in this ongoing miracle as God goes from one place to the next? God is on the move. He's not finished yet. And he's asked each and every one of us, hey, would you create that space for me to do a miracle? Yeah. This story is decades in the making, but still only the beginning. Yeah. I can't wait to see what happens next. Church, would you stand with me? Would you stand? Is this working? I got a loud voice anyway. Oh, there we go. It's going to be twice as loud. How good is God? We're going to go back into worship real soon. But I got you standing for a reason. Wake you up. We talked about something just before we watched that, and I really do believe, and I, I hope it stirred your faith. I hope it gave you context to what a miracle really looks like over an extended period of time. That, that tapestry of one provision after the other paints this beautiful picture of our God, that He is so involved in each and every one of us, and He wants to be more involved in each and every decision that we make. I talked earlier that the Israelites sent 12 men, each representing a tribe, to take a stone from the riverbed. What I didn't mention is that they were called and directed to take that stone directly from where the priests were carrying the Ark of the Covenant. Isn't it interesting that what made a way, what God decided to use to allow the Israelites to move from the wilderness into the promised land was a priesthood carrying the presence of God. That's what he used. He sent a priesthood carrying his presence at that time was the Ark of the Covenant into the impossibility first. And because of them, because of the presence of God, we see a whole nation move from something that was crippling them something that was distracting them, a lack of meaning, failed expectations, doubt, trial and testing. We see all that begin to dissipate as they walk across the miracle because of the presence of God. And my question to you, after you watch a, a video like that, after you hear a story like that, does it not tell you, does it not encourage you that because of Jesus, the presence of God is no longer contained in the Ark of the Covenant? The Bible says that when Jesus let go of His Spirit, when He said it is finished, that the temple veil, that was a very thick, very, very indestructible veil, tore in half. And it signified that never again will the man-made object or creation, a man-made creation, hold the presence of God. That His presence had now been unleashed to be inhabited by His people, you and I. He then goes on to say in 1 Peter chapter 2 that we are a... Royal priesthood. You and I are now the priesthood and we carry the presence of God. Those men that went and took the stones, they took it from where the presence of God had stood in the miracle. The future generation, your calling is going to rely on the fact that the miracle is not found in your strength. It's not found in what you can manufacture. It's not found in what you can fully understand. We serve an indescribable God. It is found in His presence. 
That's why we are spirit filled. We are spirit filled. The Holy Spirit is in us. He guides and directs us. He gives us authority. He gives us insight. He gives us the ability to achieve the impossible. As we go into worship right now, as you reflect on what God was, and trust me, there was more stories, but we would have been here for hours. Who you are, who God created you to be, the reason you're standing here or watching online right now is not by mistake. I will never subscribe to that. I serve the God that is a divine God, a divine creator. He is the author, the beginning and the end. He sees all things. He sees this moment. He saw it. He sees it now and he knows the effects to come. You do not stand here or watch here right now simply by chance. The only reason you will not inherit everything God has for you in this moment is because you have decided that you are the one in control. You have decided that you will be the one to establish what is going to happen and what's not going to happen. Can I tell you, if you do that, you rob yourself of the inheritance. You will never walk the impossible. You'll never see the river turn into a highway. You will never see the walls of Jericho in your life fall down. You'll never see the giant slayed. You will never inherit what He's given you. You'll never have the memorial stones to look back on and further more your kids won't have a miracle to look back on does that not stir you to believe for more don't let what was rob you for what is to come the miracles that we lived in it's beautiful was not so that we would stay in that miracle but that we would be expectant for more we believe that there is more on your life that is more on avant life church here in squamish and wherever god sends us but it takes right people right places right time church are you ready to call this place you're the right person in the right season and this is the right time for god to move in your life let's let's worship
I really sense in this atmosphere of worship that the Holy Spirit wants to do some work. He wants to answer some questions because some of you have come with questions. He wants to fill some of you with courage because some of you have come wanting courage. Some of you are gonna have a moment like I had five years ago at a conference or Pastor Emma had at a restaurant or Alicia had getting up and looking at Instagram, the first thing, which we know is unhealthy, but God works through all things. Maybe it's Jan that waited 12 years to see a promise of God come to be. Maybe you're gonna have a moment like Gordon and Julie where you're outside your comfort zone, but the Holy Spirit right now in this moment is gonna awaken in you and say, you have life and life is abundant. And I've called you for a season of this. And I say that because for all of us, we are here to make His Name known. And in that, we inherit the miracles. We pursue the call of God in our life. And so with knowing that, that the Holy Spirit wants to minister here, now, right people, right time, right season. If that's you with every eye shut, just for privacy reason, not looking around. If that's you, you're like, Holy Spirit, doesn't matter where you sit on what I just mentioned. Maybe you need a miracle. Maybe you need some energy and courage. Maybe you need a moment. Maybe God wants to speak through the Holy Spirit right now in your life. But if that is you, if you've got an expectant heart, if you wanna leave this place changed, stirred, awakened, challenged, maybe you need to leave this place with questions answered in His presence. If that is you right now, would you raise your hand? Would you say, you know what, God, that's me. I need that right now. I need a moment with you like never before. I need my boring conference moment. I need my restaurant moment. I need my my miracle right now. And we're gonna pray and we're gonna believe. You know, whether God is on the move, that He's not finished yet, that five years into this journey, two years after we've planted, He has just only begun to do the work that He has envisioned over our lives here in Canada. Come on, let the Holy Spirit begin to talk. Begin to minister. Don't be afraid. Just acknowledge yourself in His presence. God, this is me. I surrender. I surrender the things that are placed in the way. I surrender all the, the, the misconceptions I have. Let the Holy Spirit mess you up tonight. Let Him stir in you something like never before. Holy Spirit, would you begin to minister? Would you begin to break down walls? Would you begin to move misconceptions and replace them with beautiful, godly conception right now? Father, I pray for those that have dreams, Lord God, that You've given them and for whatever reason, Lord, they've grown dry or they've put them on the shelf, Lord, and they've been disheartened, Lord. Would You begin to awaken them right now in Your presence? Would You begin to flan the flames of passion and excitement and expectation in the lives right now? Lord, those who have come for a word, Lord God, one that would stir their faith, would You begin to drop it in their hearts? Lord, I pray right now, people right across the congregation and watching online are receiving words from You, Lord, as You speak to them, as You stir in them, You're beginning to give dreams and promises right now in Your presence. You're beginning to instill courage and boldness to achieve the impossible, Lord. Lord, I pray right now there's people here that are going to step out into the river from what was the wilderness and begin to transverse that river into a highway in Your presence and they're going to begin to inherit Your promise here right now. Right season, Lord, fall in this place. Lord, fall on the lives watching on line, Lord. We've come here for You. Lord, this is a memory of You. This is a miracle from You. This is the impossible right now. Lord, stir in this place, Lord God. Father, those who need healing, Lord, we cry out, Lord, You are the great physician. Would You begin to heal, Lord, the mind, the body, the spirit, Lord God. Begin to bring together rest of Lord. Your Word says that You came to set the captives free and heal the brokenhearted. And so right now, in your presence, we hold you to your covenant promise that you are binding up the wounds, that you're setting the captive free, and you're healing the brokenhearted. Oh Lord, you are the God of provision. Lord God, that you are beginning to unleash the resources of heaven over lives right now, Lord God. Those that need a job, you're given a job. Lord God, those that need finances, you're given finances. Lord God, those who need a moment with a friend or in their marriage over their health, Lord, you are the God that is unleashing heavenly providence and resource right now, Lord. Father, we know it's by 
by your grace and it's sufficient, Lord. It's not by our works, but by your goodness. And on our birthday, we don't celebrate what we did. We celebrate the goodness of our God. We celebrate the goodness of our Father in Jesus' name. I love that we reflect on what God has done here, but we're beginning to see Him do something similar, but different in Squamish. And that He's not calling just Pastor Emma and a few people, or Pastor Ben and a few people. He's calling all of us. And I say that because our story as a church is right people, right time. Which means every person that is present, guess what? You're the right person for the right time. And with that in mind, I'm going to ask Pastor Daniel to come up and he's going to pray and he's going to lead us as we believe each and every one of us that we are called here, right person, right people, right time, and that we have a job to get done in Squamish. And it's exciting. And that in our third birthday, that the story is going to have a whole bigger chunk of celebrations at the end. Why don't you just lift your hands in adoration of our King. Father God, right now, we just adore you in this moment. God, we thank you for what you have done, Lord God. We look back and we reflect right now, God, of every single stone that you laid before us, Lord God, to give us clear deliverance into your presence, Lord God, into your miracles, Father God. Right now, we just stand here in awe of who you are, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've not called us just to be here, planted on the side of a mountain, Lord God, but you've called us to go out into all the nations, into all the generations, Lord God, and set your message into the hearts and minds of people there. Father, we pray over Squamish right now, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you've delivered Squamish into our hands, Lord God, that you've given us a place to call home, Lord God, for people that have been searching, for the people that have been lost for so long, Lord God. We just pray right now. We just thank you, God, that you're touching hearts and minds right now as we as we pray together, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, that you're putting yourself in the way of people's walk, Lord God, that you're injecting yourself into home, homes, oh God. You're injecting yourself into minds, oh God, into dreams, oh God. Father, we pray for crazy encounters with with Jesus on the street, in the homes, in the workplaces, oh God, whether it be divine um, interlocking moments, oh God, that just has your name and your fingerprint all over it, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we stand on guard as your watchmen, as your watchwomen for, for Squamish right now. We choose to intercede on behalf of that place. Darkness must flee because Lord, you are there. Your light is there. Lord, I just pray that you make us like salt, Lord God, that we will just transform the very fabric of Squamish, Lord God, because of what you're doing, God, because of we've said yes to you. 
Right now, I pray for every single heart in this building, Lord God. May we just be people that say yes and amen to your promises, Lord God. Yes and amen to where you've called us. Yes and amen to what you're doing in our lives, Lord God. Father, we set ourselves before you and we just thank you so much that you've chosen us, God, that you've set us apart in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we know as a church that God is calling us to many places and Squamish is the second place. And as we steward that well, we know that He'd begin to entrust us with more. So continue to pray in your personal time and you pray to God. Make sure you bring Squamish before Him. Stand with us as believe that God is up to a miracle, that He's begun the process already. Uh, we've got a really important announcement for you right now. We're gonna go back into a praise song, but you get the praise knowing that there is a happy birthday cookie waiting for you as you leave the building. Well, we know who stole the cookie from the cook cookie jar. Andrew. Churches, I can ask you to do anything moving forward from this moment is to speak words of expectation, to be Christians that declare that God is on the move. He said it to me five years ago, and He doesn't want us to stop saying it. He wants us to know He's not finished yet. He's on the move in our lives, in the city, in this province, in this nation. And the more believers, the more Christians who start declaring His Word with excitement and expectation, the more people that move in His Spirit and allow Him to do the work and us be obedient, the more our city will begin to be resurrected in the goodness of God. Can I pray for you and then we can end on a party song. Lord, right now, I thank you for each and every person, Lord, here and watching online, Father, in their homes. Holy Spirit, we just ask what we received from you tonight, that we wouldn't forget it, we wouldn't put it on the shelf. Lord, but it would become a lens to everything that we do from this moment forward, Lord, that we would have such a heart of expectations, Lord God. Your word says that where your followers, where your disciples, where your devotees go, there will be signs and there will be wonders and there will be miracles, Lord. And we just ask wherever we take your word, wherever we share it in courage or in the opportunity that you've given us, Lord, that we would see signs and wonders and miracles in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray a blessing over each and every person, an anointing to do the work of the ministry you called on each and every one of us be great ambassadors for Jesus to whom we owe all give all praise and all honour we pray this right now in that powerful name of Jesus Christ and everybody said Amen, Amen. Church let's uh, end on a banger hey boom are you guys excited come on we, this is a privilege that we get to praise him so let's give him our own
mountains shake at the sound of just one name over all Jesus reigns nations bow mountains shake at the sound of just one Happy birthday, Avant Life.